In the golden age of the 16th century, where the waves of the Indian Ocean roared with untold secrets, one name struck fear into the hearts of colonial powers and rival kingdoms alike, Malahayati. Known as the fierce and unyielding queen of the seas, her story is one of unmatched courage, strategic genius, and an indomitable spirit that defied the very tides of history. Malahayati, born in the early 1550s in the coastal city of Aceh, Indonesia, was destined for greatness far beyond the conventional paths of her time. Her early life was marked by an intimate understanding of the ocean's capricious nature, an advantage that would later become her greatest strength. As a young woman, she was thrust into the tumultuous world of maritime warfare, where she would forge her legacy as the unrivaled commander of the Achenese fleet. The rise of Malahayati began with the fall of her husband, who was a prominent naval commander. Instead of succumbing to grief, Malahayati seized control of his fleet and transformed it into a formidable force against the Portuguese and other colonial adversaries. Her remarkable leadership and tactical prowess soon earned her the respect of her crew and the fear of her enemies. Under her command, the Achenese Navy became a dominant power in Southeast Asia. She masterfully orchestrated numerous naval battles using innovative strategies that often left her opponents in disarray. Her most notable triumph came in 1582 when she led a successful raid on the Portuguese fortress of Malacca. This daring attack not only demonstrated her exceptional strategic mind, but also significantly diminished Portuguese influence in the region. Malahayati was the daughter of Admiral Mahmud Sia of the Aceh Empire. After completing her education at Pesantren, an esteemed Islamic school, she pursued further studies at the Aceh Royal Military Academy, also known as Mahad Baitul Maqdis. After the Portuguese conquest of Malacca, Aceh emerged as a more formidable power, securing the Malacca Strait as a trading route exclusively for Asian merchants. Sultan Alauddin Mansur Sia bolstered his military strength by constructing a formidable navy and appointed Malahayati, a renowned widowed warrior from Aceh, as his first admiral. Malahayati, already esteemed by Aceh's soldiers and generals for her legendary command in numerous battles against the Portuguese and Dutch, was the natural choice for this crucial role. Malahayati was the first woman admiral in the modern world. Her troops, known as the Inong Balay, were uniquely composed of widows from Aceh, a formidable force named after Fort Inong Balay. In 1599, Dutch expedition commander Cornelis de Houtman arrived at the port of Aceh, where he was initially met with peace by the Sultan. However, de Houtman's subsequent insult ignited a conflict. Having already clashed with the Banten Sultanate in northwest Java, de Houtman decided to launch an attack on Aceh. Malahayati, leading her formidable Inong Bali army, promptly countered the Dutch aggression. After a series of fierce and brutal battles, Malahayati secured a decisive victory, culminating in the death of de Houtman on September 11, 1599. In 1600, Dutch Navy commander Paulus van Kerden plundered an Achenese merchant ship off the coast of Ake, seizing its precious cargo of pepper. In response to this affront, Malahayati ordered the arrest of Dutch Admiral Jacob von Neck in June 1601. Amidst ongoing incidents that hampered Dutch naval expeditions and the looming threat from the Spanish fleet, Dutch Prince Moritz von Oranje dispatched emissaries with a diplomatic letter of apology to the Aceh Empire. Admiral Lawrence Bicker and Gerard de Roy represented the Dutch in these negotiations. In August 1601, Malahayati met with the Dutch emissaries to finalize a treaty agreement. The ceasefire included a payment of 50,000 gulden from the Dutch as compensation for Van Kerden's actions, and in return, Malahayati released the Dutch prisoners. Following the agreement, the Sultan sent three emissaries to the Netherlands to solidify the diplomatic relations. In June 1602, Malahayati's esteemed reputation as the protector of the Aceh Kingdom prompted England to pursue a diplomatic approach to access the Malacca Strait. James Lancaster delivered a letter from Queen Elizabeth I to the Sultan, and it was Malahayati who led the negotiations with Lancaster. The successful agreement granted the English access to Java, enabling them to establish merchant offices in Banten shortly thereafter. In recognition of his successful diplomacy, Queen Elizabeth I awarded Lancaster a knighthood for his achievements in Aceh and Banten. 
Despite her fearsome reputation, Malahayati's life was not without personal sacrifice. The demands of her role meant she was often separated from her family and faced constant threats to her life. Yet she remained unwavering in her commitment to her people and her cause. Malahayati was killed in combat during the Aceh expedition of 1606, while defending Teoluk Kruang Raya from the Portuguese fleet. She was laid to rest on the slope of Bukit Kota Dalam, a small fishing village approximately 34 kilometers from Banda Aceh. Malahayati's death in 1604 marked the end of an era, but her legacy endured. She is remembered not just as a pirate queen, but as a pioneering leader who reshaped the course of Southeast Asian history. Her life remains a testament to the power of determination and the strength of a woman who dared to defy the ocean's roar and the world's expectations. Today, the story of Malahayati continues to inspire awe and admiration, a powerful reminder that history is often shaped by those who dare to challenge the norms and carve their own path against the fiercest of tides.